So let's start by introducing you. Uh, who are you and how did you find your way to the Estonian Theatre Festival? My name is Nils Fries. I'm an artistic director and I run a performing arts center in Ada, Ohio, which is the hotbed of Estonian culture in the Midwest, of course. I, I make a joke. I have Estonian background. I was born at a displaced persons camp in Germany and my parents were Estonian. And so I went to the United States and uh, happily, blissfully marching along the world of theater as an actor and as a director until the coming of freedom for the Second Republic in Estonia. All of a sudden I found myself with resources and capabilities to do things. So I wrote to the Vanimu Theater in 1992, just for fun, asking for an Estonian playwright to write a play for me about the coming of freedom to uh, Estonia. Lo and behold, Paul Eric Rumo replies, well, and he'll, he'll write a play. I've studied Paul Eric Rumo, and I was honored to be able to work with him. And suddenly he becomes Minister of Culture. From there I meet Ray Remo, I meet Preet Raud. I'm connected in Estonia, in the arts world, and so we've brought 14 Estonian artists to the university. Uh, it's what I can do as an Estonian American to help Estonian culture, to bring it to the United States, to share it with the people there. And we've also had I think it's 12 students study internships and do projects here in, the, uh, in Estonia. So the, the theater festival occurs, sounds like fun, it's a good time in Tartu. I have friends in Tartu, I get to see theater that's cutting edge, that's new theater, that's exciting. So you go and you have fun and it's very pleasant. And this is not your first time here? No, no, I think it's my third time for the festival. And what keeps bringing you back? New theater? New theater. There's, uh, theater is an addiction. And uh, it's, it's not a narcotic, but it sends a shiver up your back. Every once in a while I'm jaded because I work in theater so long that that shiver is missing. And I come here to Estonia and at each festival I, I see one play that gives me a shiver that answers that addiction that you're looking for, that, that magic of moving and touching you somehow. Last year it was uh, the Rock Fair Theatre. And so, again, we decided, well, let's bring them to the United States. And so after seeing the whirlwind of winds uh, with the Rock Fair Theatre last year, we arranged and uh, they're going to be performing in Chicago, Ohio, of course, you can't miss the Ohio-Estonian connection, uh, Toronto, Washington, D.C., and New York. And it's, and it's fun to do it. My students learn by working with it. They came to the, to the Baltic Festival in Rockford this year also to work. Um, so based on the performances you have seen here over the years, uh, what is your view or opinion on Estonian theatre? Um, is there any specific qualities to Estonian theatre that you can't see anywhere else? Or do we make this sort of universal theater that can be understood abroad? Good theater is universal. <laughs> it's a story of boy meets girl, girl hates boy, boy likes girl, dreams are crushed. Th they're, they're universal themes. They're about people. People are the same around the world. What happens in Estonian theater, you guys take chances. Uh, you do new works. You push back the envelope of what theater could or should be. Well, in the United States, we have, we have rules and little boxes that we put things into. I come to Estonia, I don't know what I'm going to see. Is this performance art? Is this theater? Is this right? Is this wrong? I don't know what it is, but it's, it's exciting for me. It's adventuresome. Uh, you guys work with metaphor and allegory so much more. It may have been because of the Soviet times where we were forced to write in that style. But it's very artistic images, it's stylish. They become puzzles, and, and they're intellectual puzzles that you look at and you dissect and you chew on, and you play with, and, and you leave very satisfied. So, um, um, you have, this year, you're the, the chairman of the jury of the Baltic Theatre Festival, and you've seen uh, new theatre um, produced from Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. Can you make any sort of generalization about Baltic theater or? Um the best Baltic theater is not heavily text driven. The best Baltic theater for me is actor driven. And it's uh, the old Lope de Vega thing, two boards and a trestle. It's an actor working without a net and making something come alive 
to an audience on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The text is important, but I'm seeing more of an auteur theory with the Estonian theater. The Estonian director takes the basic text, at least this festival, and adapts it, modifies it, sexies it up, makes it to some sort of exciting moment that people can share people with. Mm. So, as uh, you said, you visited the festival here before, and during that time, has Estonian theater changed in any way? Estonian theater has changed for me since 1992 to now. I've seen lots of it. There's one thing you guys do terribly, which I... You're true. You do musical theater terribly. <laughs> musical theater is hot, sexy, fast, and you have a great vocal tradition, and you make the music come alive with good sing. No, the music is just a way to flash something through to the next thing. So thank goodness you're not doing it any more musicals. You're doing some, but you know, they'll not get my uh, euro for the, for the musical here. What I do see that's a lot of fun is a more refined structure and a more opportunity for kids. Y kids, anyone under 30 is a kid in my mind. Uh, for young directors to work. Gilgamesh last year, the Von Kral has just, you know, that, was that the Von Kral Gilgamesh? No. Yes. It's, it's just developed so excitedly. Uh, when back in the 90s, I saw a production by them of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, done with six actors, the truncating it. Just absolutely brilliant and wonderful. But they're getting more resources, more chances, more production that's coming out. It, it's exciting to see it grow, and it's been exciting to see the, uh, the kernel. It always was a good theater town, a good country, and now it's just blossomed. Um, so what are the main issues of the performances you have viewed here? And uh, uh, is it more local or I believe I asked you that before, but um, what pops out when you think about Estonian theater and the issue, issues and topic it works with? I think, and boy, I'm really going on a limb on this, so if I make a mistake, indulge me. I think it's about human beings. I think it's human, Estonians becoming human beings and becoming their own culture and expressing their own issues and their own problems. And surprisingly so, those problems are not particular to Estonia. The problems are shown within an Estonian context, but it's the issues of being human beings. That's why this year's theme is wonderful, the actor, because the actor is the human being. The actor is the life breath of the theater. And last year you had the signature, a way of focusing in on the artists exploring that issue. It's human beings within an Estonian context. And to me, I love history. Because when I read history, the Roman history, these are human beings that did the exact same things I'm doing, except they don't have the same technology, but they, they betray each other, they love each other, they create dreams, they crush dreams. And it's the same thing right now. I'm seeing that same thing, the humanity of it, within the Estonian context, however you take chances with it, though, which is so exciting. You're not frightened to fail. And if you, in the United States, we always have to be successful in what we're doing. We have these barometers of how much box office, how much this, and, and, and that's the barometer of success. No, you guys take chances in exploring stories in new ways. And also that exploration in new ways becomes stimulating and exciting. And can you tell me if that's true uh, about the Latvian, Lithuanian theater as well? Seems to be based on what I've seen right now. Uh, the best theater that I've seen is theater that's taking chances. Uh, the, th the theater that... When I watch there, I scratch my head. I wonder, why am I not liking this? If it becomes too traditional and too text-driven, I get a little concerned. But when I see images exploding in my mind, exploding on the stage, uh, throwing kernels into my head that I can chew on for a day or two, that's what theater does. And it seems to be all the... Uh, the three little countries, they're bedmates, yes? So, um, my next question would be, uh, you told me that great theatre gives you shivers, and uh, has there been a performance in this year's program that has Yes, but I'm that? not going to say it right now. The judges are working on it, and I'm not going to give away my thing. There was a shiver moment. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's not wasted time here. It's so never wasted time when you see someone doing their art form. 
you learn something from everyone. You go, why did they make that? Why did they make that choice? And that question why drives everything. So just to see anything is exciting. And um, you also uh, talked about the theme of the Swiss festival, the focus sector, and it being uh, very interesting and good. Is there ever a moment in theater where the actors, actor isn't in focus? No. It, the classic definition is A, playing the part of B with C, watching. Everything else is supplemental. You don't, you don't, you want to leave not singing the set, not singing the music, but you want to fu see this human being taking chances as a human being, standing for what's right and good. So that's the classic model, but the new postmodern model that we're seeing right now is we're seeing human beings. We're looking at them and perplexed about why did this human being do that? The human being, is that like, I'm not like that? Well, maybe I am a little bit like that. And we see ourselves, the old Shakespeare, you can do all the cliches, the old Shakespeare thing, a mirror to life, but just seeing the actor working without a net, on a tightrope. And I admire to know, I'm starting to do films now as an actor. And films for me are, are pretty easy as an actor, because I sit around and I work what I'm doing, I work hard, preparation, and then I sit and they say, okay, Nils, now do what you do. And I do what I do, and all I have to do is hit it once. And it's in the can and we're ready to go. A stage actor has to hit it every single night. And every audience is a new audience, and every audience is different. And he has to create that bond with that audience. And if it's not there, nothing will happen. But if it's there, that rush, that shiver starts coming. Um, so, if you heard the theme of this year's festival, did you have any expectations? And were those expectations met? I didn't know what to expect. And so I'm sitting at home thinking, which is a dangerous thing to do all the time, but thinking, is it going to be, are we looking for ensemble pieces? Are we looking for monodramas? How are they going to do it? And I think they're just going to do drama. They're just going to do drama. And I think the theme is doing drama where the actor excels. And uh, all drama is actor driven. But I think the curator has been very good this year in choosing works that encourage us to watch the craft of the actor. I've enjoyed more particularly here this time the panel discussions. We're talking about directors and actors and how they do their vision. That's exciting to me because I, I, I direct, I act, and I have a system. And I've discovered my system is okay for me. It's not the best thing on the planet yet. It can be refined and developed. And when I see other artists who do good things share with me how they do it, it's like I'm peeking behind the curtain a little bit, and I'm like a little child, and I walk away with a piece of candy every time. So um, we're reaching the end of our interesting conversation. Is there anything you would like to share? Yeah, I had a great moment in Estonia. As much as Estonia has grown and matured, it's still the old Estonia in some ways. I went for a cup of coffee at the Kalpamaya. I went to the little shack where they have coffee on the third floor. And I went up to this woman, I said, Balun, my solving tas coffee balun, balun here. And she told me, excuse me, I'm closing in 10 minutes. A new waitress is coming in. I can't serve you now. Come back in 10 minutes. I'm like, ah, that's the old Estonia. <laughs> <laughs>